Hi, I'm Wayne Stacy, a member of Sea Scout Ship 198 in Milton, Delaware. Today, I'd like to go over the use, customs, history of the bosun's call. First of all, the history of the bosun call goes back in the early 1600s when the British Royal Admirals used them as a sign of authority and it was considered a high honor. They called theirs the golden whistle, which was the highest honor in which could be bestowed on a particular Navy Admiral at the day. If you can imagine on sailing ships in howling gale winds and rough sea conditions, the bosun who would give orders throughout the ship when men were working aloft and gale winds were unable to hear or make sense of any commands that were given from the deck. However, with the loud, shrill pitch voice or pitch sounds of the bosun call, it could be heard throughout the ship, both down below and aloft. To describe the nomenclature of the bosun call, you have the gun or shaft, the mouth, the bowl or buoy, you have the hole, and along both edges, you have what's called the P. Along the bottom is sometimes called as the keel. In different countries, you'll hear the nomenclature described different ways. This, where it connects, is called the shackle. That's all there is to it. Again, the shaft or gun, the mouth, the bowl or buoy, the hole, and the P is on either side. It's the distance where the shaft or gun meets the bowl. When you purchase a bosun's call, they claim that most of them are pre-tuned. That is not always the case. You can buy some on the market today that are guaranteed to be tuned. They're the higher end pipes. However, if you need experience on how to tune the pipe, I will explain several methods. First, we're talking about the buoy or the bowl. The bowl carries a lot of air. If you notice, I've put indentations and dents on either side of my call. It's just personal preference. I did that by using the back of a spoon, tapping it gently, not to make the indents too much. Now, I have to decrease the volume in the buoy or the bowl so that I can hold my pitch. What you will do is take beeswax, take small portions of beeswax, drop into the hole, take a match, or lighter, gently heat the bowl to liquefy the beeswax, holding the pipe at a 45 degree angle. After the wax has liquefied in the forward part of the bowl, take the flame away, let it cool, holding the pipe at a 45 degree angle. Once the wax has set, you can go ahead, turn it forward, and then check the proper alignment with the gun versus the leading edge of the buoy or bowl, you take a straw from a broom, slide it in the mouth through the gun. As it comes through, it should bisect the leading edge of the bowl or buoy. It should split right in the middle. If you can see, this is doing it extremely well. It's literally literally splitting it right in the center. So now I know I have proper alignment. So when I blow the wind through, it's going to sound properly. Sometimes you have to file the leading edge of the bowl at the hole to allow the wind to come across. Whenever you use it, it'll be evident to hear if you have a strong hissing sound, you know you're escaping air from the P on either side or you don't have proper wind alignment at the leading edge of the hole of the bowl or buoy. From there, you check the clearance from where I spoke of the, with a gun, which is either side, which is called the P. It's the distance between the gun and the bowl to make sure that there's not much clearance. If there is a large amount of clearance, you need to seal that either either using beeswax and or silver solder. I'd recommend beeswax, it's a little safer. Another reason why you're filling the bowl or the buoy 
with wax or silver solder is to fill the bowl to allow you to maintain and hold your call longer. If it was empty, it would take more air to make the proper sound for the ceremony that you're doing. Those are the procedures. You may have to readjust, put more wax in, or take more wax out. That's why I recommend beeswax. In this segment, we will talk about lanyards and the proper uses. As you see, I am using a working lanyard. It is recommended that when you wear dress whites, your lanyard should be black. This is a everyday common working lanyard. There's nothing fancy, strictly easy to use, lightweight. It can be adjusted up and down to the collar. The lanyard, when used, should be no longer than the reach of the piper. When resting at its side, it should go no lower than the left or right pocket, respectively. Sea Scout jumper tops, dress whites, only have a left-handed pocket. Therefore, the call would be stuck 45 degree angle so that the mouth is showing. The loop shall fall naturally down, not encumbered or bundled up, and it looks very natural for the wearer. The white lanyard in front of me is a very ornate lanyard used for special occasions for visiting VIPs and senior ranking Sea Scout officials. White lanyards are to be worn on dress blues. Again, black would be worn on dress whites. In this segment, I will explain the proper holding of the bosun's call in the right and left hand. I am a predominantly left-handed piper. You shall take your thumb and forefinger. The thumb will go at the base of the keel. Wrap your fingers gently around, putting slight pressure on your thumb. Letting the bowl or buoy rest upon the palm of your hand. For a right-hander, you put your hand up, you, your thumb is key. You place your thumb at the base of the keel, resting the gun in the bowl against your fingers and palm of your hand, slightly bending your fingers over in this grip. And you curl your fingers over and hold. I'll explain more of the positioning of the different sounds and notes in the next segment.